and I don't care how many enemies I'm gonna have to make. So I did, you know, the only thing is I, I will do what I need to do to get what I need to get. The only condition I put on myself is I don't wanna hurt anyone. I don't wanna hurt anyone, yeah? It's not like, no matter what, get out of my way. No, that's when I draw the line. People might get hurt a little bit, but it's never intentional. That's why I can sit in front of the best coaches on the planet and say, I'm gonna be bigger than you. Not because I'm smart and not because I'm a better human being. You know, I love you all. I say, I love my competition. They're amazing people. I love you, but you're going down <laughs> anyway. <laughs> because if nothing else, I want what I want more than you want it. So, you know, to be the best. And now, you wanna say something? I was gonna ask, um, your, your morals, like, is it based, is Sorry, it? Ah. Uh, Sorry, the um, morals you're you're implementing is it spiritual or is it life experience based? Uh -huh. I would say uh, spiritual or life experience based. It's gonna be a combination because um, I've done lots of spiritual work. I will talk about spirituality in a minute. I've done lots of personal development. You know, I've been doing personal development for myself for the last eight years, and then. It's going to be a blend of that and my life experience. Um, you know, having lots of mentors. Most of my mentors are dead. People like Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, you know, some, you know, uh, big guys in personal development. They passed away, but their work is still there and we can all access it, which is great. Um, so to answer your question, it's going to be a blend of, of you know, the stuff that I've learned, I've, I've read, the events I've been to, and um, life experience. Um, and guys, there's, there's two elements I discussed, I talked about. Um, the passion, the hustle muscle. And then there's the third one. And that's the one I help people with the most. Because, like I said, passion, I can't really make you more passionate than you already are. I can make you a little bit more passionate by helping you get the results, like I said. Um, but if you, you know, generally like enthusiasm and passion, like I'm not going to work with you anyway because I only work with people who are enthusiastic about what they do. And, uh, and it's going to be hard for any coach to help you if you not really like what you do or you don't love what you do. Um, then being a hustler, so working hard. Again, if you are a lazy person, if you're just lazy, then you know, when you think about it, a coach will not make you do something you don't want to do. We can't force anybody to do anything. Just like you can't pay someone, a personal trainer in the gym, to, to, uh, to do the push-ups for you, you have to do the push-ups yourself. They can be next to you, come on, you know, counting, which helps. But ultimately, you have to do the movement, right? The same with coaching. But if we combine these two elements, passion and, and hard work, the, what's left is the strategy. So another way to describe a life coach is a life strategist. I'm a life strategist. You come to me with a passion. You, you bring the willingness to work hard, and I will help you with the strategy or a coach will help you with a strategy. He says, okay, you have this, you have this, what's your goal? This is my goal. I wanna make, let's say, 10K from music a month by the end of 2016. Okay, why you wanna make 10K? So when it comes to setting goals, the very important question to ask is why you want it. And what you will find is that um, if your goal includes other people, you might find it much easier to achieve it. I, it was Paolo Coelho who said something like that, that the universe will help you to achieve your goals if your goal will impact, if you achieving your goal will impact more than just yourself, if, you, if your goal is bigger than just you. So, if, you know, when I think about money, and guys, I love money. I love money. Money is great. And I tell you why I love money, because money is power, and the power is influence. And for me to be in a position to support my parents who never had money in a, in, a, in a way that doesn't affect me at all, it's a beautiful thing. For me to be able to date someone, and I dated this girl a few weeks ago, she was 22 and she didn't make any money, no money in the house, I mean in the family. And you know, that didn't work for us, but for me sitting there thinking, I remember having this first like, oh okay, she, if we are together, she doesn't need to worry about money. And I thought to myself, this is power. 
And I don't want anything back. I, I don't even need thank you from my parents. I know they're thankful. I wouldn't even thank you from my girlfriend, but it's, it's the power that gives you the freedom. Power, freedom, influence, all the good stuff. But I'll talk about it in a minute. Um, so the strategy. You come with the goal and we create a strategy. So if this is your goal, okay, this is why you want it, what needs to happen between now and then for you to achieve it? And guys, of course you're gonna struggle. I'm not saying like that you all struggle. But well, some of you, of course you might struggle um, to wake up in the morning and feel particularly motivated to pursue your goal of making it big in music or making it not big, making it somehow in music, if you don't have a clear strategy. The same way people go into the gym that have never been to the gym before, they don't hire personal trainers, they sign up for the gym 1st of January, right? The best time for gym owners, January, first six weeks of, and two weeks of February. Okay, let's do it. And they get to the gym floor, not a fucking clue what to do. They look around, they see all these machines, all these dumbbells, all these big guys winking themselves in the mirror, you know, including myself. Not so big, but still winking. And it's like, shit, because there's no strategy. So guess what? They're going to fail because this, they don't know what to do in the gym. And it's the same in business. So yes, they have a goal. I want to lose weight. I want to gain muscle. So they're clear about the goal. They know why they want to do it, probably. But there's no strategy. That's why them investing in a personal trainer would be the best investment in this particular thing. You know, If the entrepreneur is a bit struggling, the best investment they can make is to get a coach, a business mentor, or to befriend a musician who is already making good to kind of help them with the strategy. The beautiful thing about the times that we live in is that we don't need to do anything but by ourselves. There's so many resources out there, and they're also free resources. Like I. I charge a lot, personally, not always 1,000 pounds an hour, so not always that much, but I have a team of associates that charge much less. But I say to people, and sometimes people come for a consultation, and they can't even afford working with my most junior associate. And I say, that's fine, because I will tell you where to go to find coaches that will work with you for free. Yes, they don't have much experience, but they will still help you. Because like I said, when I first started, 20 pounds an hour, which is kind of free, and I was making amazing results for my clients. Just working with someone on this strategy, brainstorming the ideas with someone is so powerful. So when you combine these three elements, guys, nothing will stop you. Now it's just a matter of time. So you're passionate about what you do, you're prepared to work your ass off and to really sacrifice. Do you know the biggest sacrifice I've made? And you, you just met me today, most of you, but those that know me know how big sacrifice that was for me. For these two and a half years, I've almost didn't date anyone. I put my dating, dating life on hold. So that was like the, the crucial year in these two and a half years when I was writing my first book, my only book so far. I didn't date anyone, not a single date for a year. I was even like a freaking monk. And when you look at my lifestyle now, I'm the very opposite to that. You know? But I was like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I need to do. What are the possible obstacles? What can stop me from achieving it? Women. Yeah, that's the biggest distraction I have, I always had. So if I cut that, if I put that on hold, there's no more distractions. So sure enough, I didn't date, I wrote the book, and people like it, or, or they lie very nicely about liking it, and um, you know, a couple of other things. So when you combine these three elements, passion, hard work, and strategy, then that's it. Then it's just a matter of time. And some people will succeed within two and a half years, like myself, you know, crazy people. The more normal people will take probably a bit longer. But it's normal for any startup. And, you know, I really want you to think about yourself, like I said, as, as a brand, that's number two, number, number one. Number two, as a, as a startup. If you start in your music career, for me, it's a startup. Oh, but I'm not a company. Yes, you are, kind of. You know, I'm not a product. Yes, you are. People either buy you or they don't buy you. So it's just how you kind of, you know, see it in your head. But like, I encourage you to think about yourself. You want to say something? Yeah, no, I want to ask a question. Um, so, all right, Wh what I was thinking while you were talking. Yeah. Um, it seems that there is, it's kind of like formulaic, right? It's, it, it feels that there is, you, you present some kind of formula mm -hmm. for everybody to follow, right? Yeah. This is the passion, the hard work, and the strategy. So my, my first question is, um, 
w when you're working with clients, do you suggest them the same strategy for each person? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that you've seen that works and every time you know you think that this is what I'm going to start with a person? Yeah. Or is it something totally customized yeah. according to what you've seen or something that you, thi you think is going to be more better tailored to that person? Mm -hmm. Do you think there is one strategy that everybody could follow or something you know that is totally personalized for each person? Okay. So I'm known for um, creating a tailor-made program for my clients. So uh, absolutely, you know, to answer your question, I don't believe there's one formula that's going to work for everybody. I'm s what, what I'm suggesting here is that every successful person will require these three elements, so passion, hard work, and, and strategy. But in terms of the strategy, when I work with people, it's always, you see, it's not like you come to me and I say, okay, do this, do this, do this. It's like, okay, what do you think will be best for you? And we kind of take it from there. And we design, we design something tailor-made, something that's going to suit you. And even then, after this, you know, 60 minutes or 90 minutes, I would still say, okay, now go out and test it. And when you come next week, you're going to report what happened, what didn't happen, what worked, what didn't work. And we're going to make necessary, necessar uh, necessary tweaks around it. We're going to do necessary adjustments. And it's a very rare for me to create a plan for a particular client, for him or her to come back and say, this was a perfect plan. It's almost like a beta version initially, yeah, like from the first session. It's like a beta version. Go and, and test it. And of course, if they come, they say, oh, I, I couldn't make phone calls because of the rain. I say, oh, no, that's bullshit, <laughs> right? So it's not a strategy that didn't work. It's just you didn't do. But if they say, okay, I didn't make phone calls because I figured that would be better off sending emails because of this and this and this, I will listen. So for one person, it could be sending emails, for example. For one person could be sending phone calls, but it's... It's not, as a coach, and you know, most of coaching is about that, I'm about doing. You know, I believe the world belongs to doers, not talkers and not thinkers. Ideas are cheap. Everybody has an idea. Yeah, and all the ideas that you can have are probably there someone you can Google and find. And so, but it's the people that take an idea and go with it. Is the people in the music industry that create these albums and push these albums in other people's throats. So you just listen to this demo. No, no, I don't have time. I'm going to send it to you again. No, I don't have time. I'm going to send it to you again. And then the person will say, for fuck's sake, I'm just going to listen so you will stop sending them to me. Like, I don't know how many of you saw the movie uh, Shawshank Redemption when he's trying to get uh, the books for the library in the prison library. He, this guy, you know, and I, I relate to this uh, character there. Because I have the same traits. He's an extreme. Maybe I'm not as good as he is. But I'm just relentless. And I encourage you to be relentless. And it's very easy to think when you start to work on something, you don't get the results that you want to get. It's very easy to start to think, I'm not getting these results that I want because I'm not good enough. Because I'm not talented enough as an artist. Don't listen to yourself. <laughs> get a coach who will believe in you. I say to people, listen, you don't need to believe in yourself when you come to me. I will believe for, for both of us until you believe in yourself too. Yeah? You, you are not, your, best, you are not your, your own best friend when it comes to success. We are usually our own biggest enemies. Because the self-doubt creeps in, you know, like I would, even now at this stage, I would be, you know, I'm doing fine. And then I would meet someone for a consultation with them, it's great. And then the, they, they don't end up working with me. And the, the thought is like, Oh, maybe you're not as good as you think you are. But it's managing this voice. So you see, the difference between successful and unsuccessful people, it's not that successful people don't have self-doubts. Everybody has self-doubts. And I'm not saying I'm so successful that I have self-doubts. Just one little example I am. But working with some of the most successful people, CEOs of one of the biggest organizations you can think of, they have self-doubts and insecurities like everybody else. What's the difference? The difference is in how they manage them, whether they allow themselves to believe in them or not. I don't allow myself to believe in the bullshit I keep telling myself sometimes, such as I'm not good enough, I'm not good looking enough to meet this girl or that girl, I'm not this or that to make this amount of money. I don't, I don't allow myself to believe in that. The, voices I would, the, the voice will always creep in and try to put you down. But you have the choice to say, you know what? I don't want to listen to this. I am good enough. I am good enough. And then what helps me 
is I'm surrounded with people and only with people that support my vision. You know, I only surround myself with people that believe that I can make it big. And if I meet someone and they're a little bit negative about I'm like, I'm not going to see them again. They don't support my mission. Usually because they're in a very bad place within themselves. So they can't comprehend, like, how can you how can be so confident? It's impossible. Come on, you can't be like, just calm down. Say, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking calm down. I refuse to calm down. And, you know, and every single one of you, you have people in your life that's, that believe in you. And you might have some people that don't. Stick to those that believe in you and let go of the ones that don't, unless they're family members. And you're fucked. <laughs> then you just, you know, think if you can spend less time with these particular family members. And then go out there and meet new people who are on the same path, on a similar path, people that see the greatness that is in you. Because I see the great, I'm not going to sound like a, like a Buddha now, but I see the greatness in every single one of you. The problem that you might face, some of you, you don't see it yourself. And that's the problem. That's what's holding you back. What happens is when I coach someone, it's like if, if I tell you for six weeks, every week, how fucking awesome you are, guess what? Eventually you're going to start to believe in it. It's like, shit, I am awesome. I, like, I told you from the beginning. <laughs> what else is new? And when you think you are great, you show up in the world in a very different way. I'm great. And because people, as people, as human beings, we are too lazy to really try to figure out everybody that we meet. If you think about yourself in a certain way, because I'm lazy as a human being, I'm going to accept your image of yourself as my image of you. So if you sit like that, I'll be like, Oh, he must be a confident guy. Okay, so in my head, this is a confident guy. If you sit like this, I mean like, oh, he lacks self-confidence. Yeah, he lacks self-confidence. Instead of trying to figure you out, you know? Especially when you go and talk to people who are in a position of helping you with your career. I don't say I'm the greatest. They're going to figure out what. But, you know, this is my work. I'm proud of it. Even if you know it's not perfect, I'm proud of it. This is my work. I've worked a year on this song, on this track, on this geek, on this album, on this demo, whatever. Take pride in what you do, you know. Not, Not everybody's going to like it. Right. So as a musician here, I think there is a voice telling me that I should not believe in myself of being proud of my music. Because I, I fucking wrote my music. I, I like it. Uh -huh. The thing is that most people will probably not like it. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, how do I approach this? Uh -huh. There is always, it's not a self-doubt, it's the fact that we created what we created, so we like it. Yeah. So the thing is, what do you do afterwards? Uh -huh. right. like you tell yourself, that you lie to yourself that what you wrote is great, and then, all right, so it's not a matter about what you believe anyways, it's about what other people believe about what you do. Yeah, great question. Um, my take on it is that no matter what we produce, whether it's the book that I can write as a coach or whether it's the music that you can produce as a musician, there will always be enough people out there to like it. So the moment, the way I look at it, the moment you try to be kind of around all the edges and, and kind of go, like, should I go mainstream or this or that, you lose your voice and there's nothing you about this anymore. So you know what I say to that? I have a very practical, very simple advice. Fuck it. This is who I am. This is what I create. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, fine. This is my music. I believe in it. Of course, if you want to sell as many albums as the Beatles, I, I suggest you don't go too much right or too much left. You just, you know. But if you don't think about selling, you know, millions or hundreds of millions of albums, you just want to have your clear voice and have a bunch of followers on Twitter, on YouTube. Just, just you know. Especially now with so many people producing similar stuff, whether it's in coaching, personal development, only music, you're not going to be even noticed if you are like somebody else, right? So, but obviously it takes the balls, it takes the courage to express yourself fully. And I go through this every day, you know, if you follow me on Facebook, I post something called thought of the day, and I just basically say something every day, and it's on Twitter as well. And I have two kind of 
discipline myself to be honest with myself. Because there's a tendency to, to write something and be like, ooh, what if I'm going to offend someone with this? What if it's a bit too much? What if it's, what if it's, and I'm saying, no, 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 just say what you think. And I have to kind of, because guys, guess what? I like the idea of people liking me. Yeah, it's very easy to say, fuck this, fuck that, you know, I don't, of course I want everybody here to like me. But not, no matter, I don't take it to the extreme anymore. So what I'm saying is, I'm not going to change myself, not consciously anyway, maybe subconsciously I do sometimes still. I want you to like me as a preference, all of you, everybody on this planet, as a preference, but not to the point where I change myself to please someone. You know, I went through this phase already, and some of you might be still at this phase. I've been to that phase, and through personal development, I came out on the other end saying, you know what, this is who I am. That's how I write books. You might not like it. That's how I post stuff on Facebook. You might not like it. That's how I present myself. That's how I speak. You know, I was speaking to this group a few months ago of entrepreneurs, and you remember when I said I came here, I liked the energy of the room. I, w I walked into that room, I didn't really like the energy. And I was like, what, should, I, should I change my style? Should I do this, should I do that, you know? And I was making the same jokes and, you know, swearing, because that's how I communicate. And they were just like, that didn't land very well. Okay, so the first joke. And they were just like, I could see on the faces, some of, most of them were like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, it just wasn't the right audience. Fine. Think how tiring it would be for you to have different kind of personas. And okay, so when I'm talking to this person, I'm this guy. When I'm talking to you, I'm this guy. When I'm talking to you, I'm this guy. That would be tiring. So how about just being who you are and let the ones that don't like you not like you? I love this. It was this um, one of these Facebook posts. It's like a, a quote, quotes on a, in a kind of visual quotes. It was... Um, it said this, um, haters will see you walking on water and say that's because you can't swim. Yeah? Haters will see you walking on water and say that's because you can't swim. So when you think about it, no matter what you do and how hard you try, there's always going to be that person who says, no, 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 this is... <coughs> fuck that person. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck him. You know, in a kind of peaceful way. I love you, but <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, because if I get angry, I, you know, I, I didn't get angry or upset in years, which is another thing from personal development I took. And I love everybody, just because they're human beings. I don't like everybody, but I love everybody. So it's like, in peace and love, fuck you. I don't care about your opinion, you know. It's your opinion, like, I would say something on Facebook, and you say, oh, how can you say that? But this is like, that's just my opinion. I respect yours, by the way. Um... So another thing I wanted to talk about, and probably that's um, one of the most important things I wanted to say today, is this whole idea of I'm an artist. It's all about creating music. It's all about art. Money is, ooh, money is evil. X factors money. This is not this is commercial stuff. Fucking now, don't think like that, please. Because that's a sh that's a sure way to fail. And I see so many coaches, you know, I can relate to that in my industry. When I hear the coach saying, I just want to help people. Fucking hell, you're going down. You're going to fail. Why? Because if you just want to help people, you're not going to spend enough time on the business side of things. If you're not going to spend enough time on the business side of things, you're not going to make enough money to be a coach. If you don't make money through coaching, you're going to need to get a job to make a living and pay the bills. Why? Because last time I've checked, we didn't live in India, in the ashram. This is London, and this is the most expensive city on the planet. And the coffee costs three pounds in Starbucks. And the same with music. If you don't make enough money from music, you need to get a job. If you get a job, you can't produce music. And you hate your job, you hate your life. All you need to do, you have the talent, you create stuff, all you need to do is become a little bit of a a little bit more of a businessman, businesswoman. Because I can tell you, I'm as good of a businessman as I am coach, if not better businessman than I am coach. And that's why I succeeded when most of coaches fail and they will never succeed. Not because I'm a better coach, 
not because they, I want to help people more than they do. No, we just want to help people, but at the same time, I need to make money. So I don't need to worry about money. Imagine a life when you don't have to worry about money. I'm not saying I'm there, but I'm almost there. It's a very nice life. You don't need to worry about money. Just whatever you want, you buy it. And the freedom it gives you when you talk to a prospective client. And they say, oh, I'm not sure. That's fine. There's no, you don't feel any pressure. Imagine the freedom. You go to talk to the agent or whatever or um, someone in a, stu in a um, recording studio. And you have enough money in the bank. You just talk to them like, yeah, listen, this is my next album. Just throw it like this. And you just don't care. Yeah, because you have enough money in the bank. If you have kids, the kids are well fed in nice schools or whatever. You just don't need to worry about money. So that's for me as a driver when it comes to money. I will make enough so I don't need to worry about it. So if I want to do uh, take time off work and do some charity work or whatever, I can do it. I don't need to worry about money. You see, I don't see the conflict between being spiritual in, and being materialistic. In fact, I see the very clear link between the two. The title of this talk today, How to Make Money Still Go to Heaven, is actually inspired, inspired, stolen from the title of the book by John Di Martini called How to Make a Hell of a Profit and Still Go to Heaven. There's a whole book about, you know, this guy is a coach and he's helping people, but he's charging like 1,500 pounds an hour. And he said, listen, it's, it's you know, the most, um, what's, the, what's the word? The most lucrative organizations on the planet are religions, when you think about it. It's been said that in Vatican, there's enough money through art and gold to finish poverty around the world. There's so much wealth. And I know religion and spirituality are slightly two different things for me anyway. But the thing is, I see myself as spiritual as I am materialistic. I said, oh, I am, I am a materialistic person. People go, oh my God, how can you say that? I'm also a very spiritual person. You know, there's no conflict. But here's the thing. As long as you see there is a conflict, you're going to struggle with money. As long as you think the money is this dirty thing and the selling myself is this dirty thing, you're going to struggle. So for your own benefit, I strongly suggest you make peace with this whole idea of making money. I'm not saying that, you know, go for being number one in your field and that's my goal. I'm not saying you should have a goal like that. I'm just saying for my benefit, you better don't have such a big goal. So it's less competition for me when I think about it, whatever your goal is. But probably if you really look inside and might be, I might be wrong with some of you on a few occasions, I appreciate that. If you really look inside, that thing that stops you from making more money, it's not the fact that you don't like the idea of money, it's, the, it's that you don't believe you can make this money. You know, that you are good enough, so it's like a limiting belief, it's some block. Or you're not talented enough to make this money. You know, I worked with this one guy and he said, Michael, I don't need a lot of money for music, but I just want to make a living for music. I said, beautiful goal. How much would that be? And I don't remember now, but I think we said like three or five K. I said, Pff. Wonderful. He didn't say, I want to make a million dollars or a million pounds. He said, 5K, fair enough. But even to make 5K working for yourself, guys, it's, it's not easy. You still need to think like a business person to make even 2K. But it's very hard to think like a business person if you don't make this, like, it's okay to be an artist and still make money. There's no conflict there. So you see, I say there's no conflict there there's no conflict there for me. And if you see there is conflict, you will see this conflict and you will be conflicted within you and you're going to struggle. It's very hard to make more of something you have a problem with, so more money if you have a problem with money. Or having more love in your life, like a romantic love, if you think that, whatever, the opposite sex cannot be trusted, for example. So you want to make a peace within yourself that, yeah, it's okay. I can make money if I want to. And I don't think you would be here today if making more money wouldn't be on your agenda. That's why, you know. Um, with your um, question, um, sorry, topic about the um, your thought of the day on the uh, Facebook and Twitter, do you have... Um, 
do you try to control um, personal outbursts? Do you, do you use it as a way to express yourself or do you only use it as a marketing tool? Both. So I'm expressing myself, but every, I see every form of my expression as a marketing tool. Even if you lash out? Sorry? Even if you lash out? What does it mean? Say if you was angry with something. Oh no, I'm never just... angry with anything. Ah. I'm a freaking Buddha, man. Like, look at me. <laughs> Arthur, have you taken some pictures already? Okay. Yeah. No, no, I don't get angry. You just you can test you can test it if you want. Fine, you can throw something at me. Yeah. So uh, everything I put out there is it's you know part of my brand, and even if I'm having a good time and take a picture with my friends. I'll make sure I don't look too drunk. My friends don't look too drunk. When you think about it, because it's a brand. You know, you're not going to see Richard Branson next to Virgin playing like this. You know, he controls his image, and and I'm controlling my image as well. One one little thing that um, I think somebody mentioned that in a marketing course that I took like years ago, and he said something very like resonated with me a lot. He said it's not about full disclosure. Uh, it, it's just the way you talk to. To, to your friends, to your family, to your cousins, to your, to your lover, to your wife, you talk to them differently. You're still the same person, but you're not going to say the same things to your little cousin as you would say to your best friend, and you're not going to say the same things to your mother as you would say to your husband or your wife. So still, I guess that you're showing, you know who you're talking to, and you give them things that you would tell them, yeah. but you're going to tell different things to your mom. You're still the same person, but you're just not showing the same side to every person. So I guess this is the way to approach it, and this is how I approach it myself on, on, on Facebook. I'm not disclosing everything about my personal life, yeah. but I make sure there is an angle to feed or to cater, let's say, this specific audience that listens to what I have to say. Yeah. I will uh, see there's something I, I, I became very clear about um, lately, is that people care more you see, I'm not an expert on music, so I'm not trying to pretend I know your industry so well. You know your industry. I, you know, I was very far away from becoming a trumpet player. That's as close as I got, got to uh, music industry and working with few musicians. So it might be slightly different in the music industry, but when it comes to businesses in general, people are more interested in the person behind the business than business itself. That's why lots of like uh, business pages fail, like Facebook business pages fail because Nobody cares what Samsung thinks about anything. What Samsung? That's just a, it's a phantom. It's, it's not. But you know, uh, but people did think, did care what Steve Jobs thought, back in Apple. You know, and people love following Richard Branson. Not so much Virgin because Virgin doesn't have a face. So Richard Branson is the face of Virgin. And I'm making sure in my communication on social media is, and if you follow me on Facebook, which I encourage you to do. Um, I make sure on my social media that people have the clear sense of who I am. Because nobody wants to work with Michael Serwa Limited. People want to work with Michael Serwa, or not. And for them to know whether or not they want to work with me, I need to show them who I am. So is he, if you look at my Facebook, some could say I show a little bit too much of who I am. And but at least you have a clear idea of you know where I'm coming from. And when you go to my website, it's like, okay, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is who I work with, this is who I don't work with. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you can get a sense, you know. And if I look for a professional for anything, you know, don't talk to me about your CV. Don't I wanna get the sense of the person. You know? And, and I know in music is different because people listen to the radio and there's a song, so it's the it, the content is very, very, very important. Uh, if they don't like the song, they don't really care how nice you are as a person. Um, but in the same time, I think in any industry, including art, you can make up for a lot with your personality. If you have a nice personality, friendly, or not, maybe you can have not very nice personality, but you are real. What I find people respond to more than anything is the authenticity. So if you're a bit edgy, be edgy. If you are nice and fluffy, be nice and fluffy. If you naturally swear a lot, swear a lot. And like you said, when I talk to my mom, I don't swear you know, anymore. When I was younger, I did because I was stupid. You know? When I talk to my dad, I do because he swears. You know? So it's kind of like 
um, you know, you, of course you adjust yourself. It doesn't mean that you're being fake. You just adjust yourself slightly, but at the core, as long as at the core you, you feel like you're being yourself, then it's fine.